Hey fair girls, welcome back to my channel or if you are new here, welcome to my channel. Hopefully you want to stick around and subscribe and make sure you hit that bell button so you're notified every single time I upload. Today's video is one that I've been wanting to film for quite a long time because it's something I find myself getting asked on my Facebook lives a lot and that is, as you can tell by the title, my favourite eye brushes. I get asked this question quite a lot pretty much every single live tutorial that i do over on facebook i get asked what are your favorite eye brushes what eye brushes would you recommend what brushes would you say to use for eyeshadow and i just thought it would be so much easier to condense it into a video here that i can just direct people to and make reference to obviously brushes i feel like it needs to be said are a very personal thing so the brushes that i like and that work for me may not be brushes that work for you i think as we evolve in our makeup style we find our own preference when it comes to brushes every artist reaches for different tools and has different brushes that they prefer so it's really important to bear that in mind but like i said this is just to answer the question that i get asked of what are my favorite current eyeshadow brushes now don't judge some of these are dirty because i have been such a busy bee bulk filming the last few days it has been super hard um, to keep up on top of brushes. So some of these are dirty, have eyeshadow and whatnot on them. It just shows they're loved, okay? So my first favourite brushes that I want to talk to you about are these. And these are from Morphe and they are the M506 brushes. These are incredible. As you can see, I like to have a few on hand. They are great for packing an eyeshadow shade in the crease and then blending it out because they're small enough to really pack that colour on and press it into the eye base but then they're soft enough to blend as well they do shed as they age so you can see this one is looking a lot smaller because this is my oldest one but actually i think they mature or age really well they are quite affordable. They're definitely under £10 a brush, I'm sure. And nearly usually always in the sales that Morphe has. I will always keep several of these in my kit. I think they are just amazing. Especially if you are a working makeup artist and you have clients who have small eyes. It's so necessary to have a really good small blending brush. And the M506 is definitely that. So I will always, always recommend an M506, always. Another fabulous small blending brush that I am a little bit obsessed with is the P. Louise, and this is the 124 brush. Um, it did come out in the P. Louise's cancelled trash can brush set, but you can buy them separately as well. They are such good brushes. They are really small, really precise. And they are quite dense, so even though they're a blending brush, you can really pack that colour right into the crease. They are brilliant. They're great for the under eye as well. And again, if you or your clients have small eyes or you just want a good small blending and packing brush recommendation, these again are around the £10 mark. I think they are definitely value for money at full price. But, you know, use my code to save 10% or hang fire till there's a sale on where you can save even more. If you do shop these P. Louise brushes or any other P. Louise products, I would really love it if you guys could use my code and my affiliate link down below. If not, that's cool, but it is there if you guys want to use it and it does help me out massively. I was gifted one of these brushes when I was sent the cancelled collection on PR, but I have since bought another and I will probably buy more of them as well. They are so good. This is, I think, the smallest brush um, that I'm going to recommend. And this is the Morphe E36 or E36 brush. It is tiny. And I love this for under the eye. I love it for really packing dark colours in the crease. I love it for if I go in with a P. Louise paint or a gel liner, first and foremost, on an eye look. This is super precise super dense it washes up really nice even if you have like gel liner or paint or whatever in it so that's a big plus because sometimes i find some brushes just soak the product in and cling to it and never come fully clean 
This is a great little pencil brush or bullet brush and it's just really good for having in your kit. Another use, I like to pat pigment on the inner corner with this um, or go under the eye with it. Under the eye, under the brow. English, Leanne, do you speak it? <laughs> this is such a good brush. I really like it. I feel like Morphe brushes are so overhyped and some of them are a bit naff, I'm not gonna lie, but there are some gems. Speaking of gems of Morphe brushes, I have another one. This is the M562, and it is literally the tiniest little blending brush, but what makes it different from the others is that it's really flimsy, really flimsy. Now that sounds negative, and sometimes it can be, but it makes it so easy to really soften those dark shades, you know, before you go in with your next shade, if you've used black or like a dark blue or something, which can be a bit notorious to blend out and soften, this is great for that. And again, the under eye as well, I feel like you can never have too many small blending brushes. I feel like everybody goes for the great big blending brushes, and I don't find the appeal now. For me, small brushes are where it's at. These, are, I told you they were dirty. <laughs> These are quite new to me. Um, they are from Made by Mitchell, M -M -M Mitchell's brand. They are the ME1 and the ME3. And I think these are fantastic brushes. They are quite small, but they are not as small as the Morphe. So they are a little bit bigger. Hopefully you can see that slight size difference there. And it's good to have multiple sizes of blending brushes. There is no one size fits all with blending brushes. I really like these. So the ME3 is slightly smaller than the ME1. They do have names each brush, but for the life of me, I can't remember. Sorry, Mitchell. I do find these can splay a little bit with age. And I've not had these that long either, but they do still work really nicely. They blend really well. I like to use these for sort of my second shade, my middle shade generally is where I kind of reach for it or applying or blending on the lid. The fact that they're bright green as well is really nice because in a sea of black and white and pink makeup brushes, they stand out so they're really easy to find if you wanna grab them in a hurry and stuff. So I actually really like that plus point and I think more brands should sort of veer away from black handles, white handles, pink handles. It's really fun. This brush is probably the newest brush to me. And as soon as I used it, I instantly bought a second. It is the My Kit Co My Cut Concealer Brush. It is basically an angled brush, but it is much longer and floppier than other uh, angled brushes. So for reference, this is my brow brush from my website. The size difference is there. And I really love this. It's fantastic for brows. It's amazing for liner, wing liner, um, applying paints and gel liner on your waterline. It is a bit of a one size fits all. It is a my cut concealer brush. So I'm guessing it's designed for, you know, going in with concealer on a cut crease. I haven't actually tried it for that yet. Uh, I'm sure I might at some point. It's a really interesting brush. Um, the length I feel like would be off-putting but I promise you it is, actually works in its favour. I want to talk flat brushes or concealer brushes or crease carving brushes, whatever you want to refer to them as because I feel like I get asked about these a lot more than anything else. I am quite... I'll flip between different ones, but these are the ones that I always end up back with. So I have the Zoeva 233 Cream Shader. This was the original cut crease brush for me. This was the brush that kind of taught me to be able to do a half cut crease and then so on and so forth. And this was my holy grail for the longest time. It's a really good starter brush for if you are, you know, starting to carve out the brows or do cut creases. It holds its shape really well and it's nice and small so you're not worrying too much about going overboard 
it's a fantastic brush so i would really recommend this as like a starter brush if you want to move into like cut crease work another small one is the p louise 7072 these brushes are so easy to come by you can buy them separately you can get them whenever you buy a crisp finish deal so the crisp packet you get one in with each uh, paint i have so many of these and they are so good for you know cutting the crease with vaseline or your cut carver um concealer they are great for applying pigment and glitter packing eyeshadow on the lid it's a really versatile brush and again it's nice and small so you don't have to worry too much moving on from the 7072 we have the 7071 now this is the big sister so there is a quite a significant size increase i now tend to reach more for this one just because i feel like i am a little bit more proficient with cut creases and i can get it done quicker quick doesn't always mean better but i think sometimes especially when you do live makeup videos time is of the essence people get bored so you do want to work as quickly as possible this is also great for patting your eye base on so a really really great brush an alternative to that is the zoeva 144 and this is bigger i believe yeah it is the biggest of them um you can literally throw a cut crease on with this bad boy you can pack eye base on so quickly it is a fantastic little brush i think honestly they're all around the same price so it doesn't really matter which one you get but if you are looking for speed versus precision go for a larger brush if you are looking for precision rather than speed go for a smaller brush but genuinely you cannot go wrong with any of these brushes i feel the need to include this brush because i feel like this brush has been monumental in my makeup journey and this is a mac 217 brush um i've had this brush probably for about six or seven years that is one thing i want to say if you invest in good quality brushes and you look after them properly they will look after you they will last a lifetime so don't be afraid to spend a little bit more on your brushes if you are able to if you're not able to there are so many fantastic budget brush brands and budget brush sets on the market that was really difficult to say don't feel like you have to get expensive brushes but if you can even if you build them up one brush at a time it doesn't matter a good brush will look after you and i genuinely feel like you can see a difference in your makeup when you use better quality brushes that's just my opinion please don't come for me but yeah this was kind of like the original blending brush for me um it is a staple it is a classic it is a must for me i love it it is so stained it is splayed a little bit but do you know what it still is a fantastic eyeshadow brush and will probably always have a special place in my heart. I have to include a peaches and cream brush in this because I do really like peaches and cream brushes. This is the PC11 and I feel like it's a really nice all-rounder brush. So it's quite dense that you can pack on, you can blend a little bit with it, you can pick up pigment and pigment adhesive with it, glitter, you know, if you don't want a solid opaque finish of glitter, you can just use, I just it's a really good all-rounder brush and their brushes are so affordable as well i think they do them at like three for 15 pounds or something like that incredible price for the quality there are some fantastic brushes from peaches i don't think you can really go wrong with any of them but i think if i had to pick just one it would be this the pc11 last but not least this is another zoeva brush it is the 142 concealer buffer brush i have a few of these again if i find a brush that i like i like to stock up and this brush is really good for concealer um or eye base so what i like to do is i like to you know carve my brow and pat on a good layer of eye base with a flat brush but then rather than pat 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 for ages with a flat brush i go in with a concealer buffer like this and just gently tap it over the eye base and it brings it to that more matte ready to go stage a lot quicker it's great for when you cut a crease 
Um, sometimes when you're trying to get that precise cut, you can sort of drift into territory where there is just too much product on the lid. And this is great for taking off excess product. It's a fantastic little brush. It's great for applying eye base under the eye, helping to blend, you know, concealer into your under eye shadow. It's just a really great brush. And I feel like it doesn't get as much recognition as it should. So heads up, get yourself over to Zoeva or Beauty Ray and grab yourself a 142 concealer buffer brush. Okay. I think that's it. I feel like I could talk about so many other brushes. I'm terrible at these favourite videos. I want to include every single thing. But I think for a start, this is a good point to sort of end the video. I feel like I've explained my favourite brushes and why. Like I said, I don't want to keep repeating myself. It's not going to be the same for everyone. There is no one size fits all with brushes. But hopefully this helps for those of you who have wanted to know what brushes I tend to gravitate towards. And hopefully it starts you on your own journey of finding out what brushes work best for you. If you have any brush recommendations, make sure to leave them down below. I love finding out about your guys' favourites as much as you guys love, I think or hope you love finding out about mine. Make sure to find me on all my other social medias as well as double checking that you have hit that subscribe button and hit the bell as well. And with all that said, Pickles, I will see you in the next video. Mm -hmm.